Hey, what's up everybody? It's me, Danae, and I'm here with a message for you. Happy Wednesday to one and all. It's April 16th, 2024. I think it's the 16th. I know, I'm such a, a boob <laughs> for not knowing the date always, but... It's just the life I live, you know? I'm pretty sure it's the 16th. If not, it's the 17th. But I feel like Friday is the 18th. So that's why I feel like it's the 16th. But either way, it is Wednesday. Happy hump day. Hope your week is faring out okay. Today, it's a bit gloomy and rainy where I am. It didn't start off that way. It was actually a beautiful sunrise. But the clouds have swept in. The rain is very light, nothing too serious. And I don't even think it's going to last very long. But that is the conditions of the current moment. And it's much chillier than it was the past couple of days. So yeah, I have more clothes on. That's how I usually know, <laughs> TMI. Oh, that it's pretty chill outside because that chill transfers to in here sometimes because sometimes my heat is actually a bit aggressive as well too, but I, I transitioned, I have radiator heat, so I had the maintenance guys turn it off because I knew it was getting warmer. And joke's on me because now it's actually cooler today and I think for the rest of the week and weekend, as a matter of fact. So that's that wacky New Jersey um, Northeast weather. You never know what you're going to get, as I said. So when you get those beautiful sunny days, you certainly do reverence them with all gratitude. <laughs> but um, I'm, it's even though it's chilled out, it's still not like snow and it's not snow weather. You know, it's no temp. So I'm still not complaining. I'd rather it be what it is and it be too hot or, like I said, to still be snowing at this time so um yeah let's cut it one more time and see where we are and i guess i'm me saying that to make it matter in this moment because clearly the weather is really not all that important for me to share every day except for just how it affects me so it just comes out naturally but you know um temperance and and particularly spiritual alchemy has is greatly dependent on how you weather the weather, if that makes sense. That your mood is not always dictated by not just the weather in the atmosphere, but what's going on in your surroundings or what you have and what you don't have or unmet expectations or disappointments like you're able to more or less keep yourself at an even kill and pretty grounded in gratitude no matter what. So as much as I was gleefully um, thankful for the beautiful sun and the higher temperatures, I'm just as grateful as I was praying even before push and record for the rain because we know that these April showers of which we're getting a lot of, at least where I am, are definitely saturating the ground for some lovely uh, harvests in the summer, whether it be produce or the beautiful trees and flowers and things of that sort, the things that make life beautiful all have a transitional phase as we do as well. So gotta be grateful for it all. Is this the card on the bottom? It sure is. Let's go ahead. <laughs> wow. Well, that's fair enough. <laughs> With this little garden in the backdrop, little secret garden. But yeah, that's exactly to my point. It's like, this is how material harvests 
are sown, sometimes through tears, sometimes through joy, sometimes through pain, but having an appreciation for all of those seeds is how the garden grows. And here it is, the Ace of Pentacles. I love it. Let's just start it right there. <laughs> like, what more is there to say, you know? So that's a big opportunity. Um, could be a, a huge windfall, maybe unexpected windfall, the way that kind of slid out like surprise, you know? I didn't even have to do much for it. Usually I have to turn over the deck and, you know, but it just wanted to make itself known without too much effort, theoretically. So it could be that there's something coming to you that you almost feel like, I, I've, I sense that you almost feel like you, I don't want to say it like that, but what's coming to the top of my head is that you don't deserve. But of course, to to trim that down a bit to size, it's just at such a magnitude that it's, it kind of incites a for me type of response. Like all of this for me, like what did I do to warrant all this, to deserve all this? And certainly... The divine is not giving out blessings for nothing, okay? So, yes, there's favor and there's grace and all that good stuff, but I feel like it's fair to say that, especially how I transitioned into that, about how your your outlook on life and how you alchemized your experiences and the good times and the bad times and the... Um, expectations for more and the reception for less and, you know, just the trials and tribulations of life as well as the triumphs, you know, and you'd be surprised at how maintaining a balanced perspective is all the work needed to warrant such a big reward and return. In our human conditioning, our first response would be to feel like I didn't do enough for all of this or wanted to see like a clear um, dotted line or paper trail or, you know, for something to literally make dollars and cents as to why you would be receiving such a big gift is what it seems to be. Whether it's the magnitude of it, the timing of it, um, the essence of it, the fact that it could be something that you absolutely had prayed for, maybe even forgot you did, and now here it comes, you know? All of that stuff is by our own human consideration, but divinely speaking, sometimes the way we live our lives as humans above the fray is all the work that that's ever been that can ever be accepted or that can ever be expected I should say and how you did that making all the difference so it's not how many hours you put in how many years you you slaved quote unquote you know the may not even be the blood sweat and tears it literally just could be your um intention to be positive no matter what or to be reasonably balanced through all of it yeah something about that i didn't say what i said for nothing in the beginning even though it kind of felt like you know a random <laughs> insert but it never really is and i love that the cards always teach us that well they always I should say they always affirm that, at least for me. <laughs> and here comes the Calvary. <laughs> oh, jeez. 
Can we get a moment? Look at this. Like, can we get a moment without the interference? Yeah, we can, because it doesn't even matter. Most of these energies are looking from a distance, wanting to rush in, but either because they see what's good on the horizon, what's coming in, or they suspect that there could be a positive outlook that they want to either be attached to, want to, want to block, want to interfere, want to stop, still. You know, you know, the usual. What's he looking at? <laughs> yeah, but exactly. It's like for all their efforts in the past up until now, what they're observing is that there's really not much that can be done. Like of all the work that somebody put in in the Seven of Pentacles, they still only harvest this little one here. What they were hoping for is this though, or at least all of this. And it's not what they got, which is which is the motivation for the rage and entitlement here. But like I said, it was about how you tilled that field, how you tended to that garden in all in in all four seasons cold hot warm rainy you still kept the same frequency of devotion and dedication and commitment no matter what no matter what and somebody seems somebody definitely spent a lot of time but given that this card to me sometimes looks like it's it's a, it's also a matter of how they spent that time as i said even in the very beginning like how you cultivated that harvest what you could have spent you could have spent blood sweat and tears but in what regard and even and also was it even necessary? And also was it your blood, sweat, and tears? <laughs> That's the other question, you know, because he got the sword drawn right here, looking from a distance, you know, spying. So one has to ask that question: Is whose blood and blood, sweat, and tears cultivated this garden? That makes a big difference. Um. Yeah. So someone could feel entitled because they did a lot they invested a lot of energy time money effort attention and it could be quite disappointing maybe even enraging to see that in the end it really the means i always mix this up but like the end didn't justify the means meaning they did a lot only to receive a little So, moving on. I'm not going to be long today. Oh, excuse me. Pardon. I actually kind of want to go back on this Knight of Swords and see what he was racing toward. But All right, let's do this. And this. Yeah, somebody's feeling wounded. Like I said, like they did a whole lot. They're exhausted at this point of the nine of wands. They're overlooking their efforts as the magician, like <laughs> trying to do the the math of the spell. Like I, this was supposed to happen by this time. And by that, by that time, when I did this on that moon, it was supposed to take effect. But so, it, yeah man there's somebody that could have been doing some type of time because i don't know why time is so prevalent in this regard but somebody did something way far out in addition to yeah because that they they spent they did something um cyclically or i mean somebody was very dedicated to whatever this was they they were very they didn't miss a beat they didn't miss a moon didn't miss an eclipse didn't miss a moment <laughs> and 
out because I was going to say somebody was doing some type of time. Um, what's the word? Like time release magic is what I'm hearing. Like if I do this, like say somebody um, did some magic the last eclipse season, which would have been last fall. I believe sometime, I think it was sometime in October-ish, October, November, or something like that. I can't quite remember. But say somebody did something then that was supposed to take, take make an effect or take effect this um, eclipse season or, or last Mercury retrograde that was supposed to take effect this one or, and also in everything in between in terms of all the moon cycles new and it's like somebody that has a schedule of magic that's why they're just like infuriated and astounded that it didn't work because they were so persistent and so diligent <laughs> in, in their craft they literally have carried the one on every spell to the T to know what it's supposed to do, when it's supposed to do, how it's supposed to do. They've amplified it. They've perhaps even incorporated others here with the nine of wands because that could be in um, association with other energies. And it was foolproof as far as they're concerned. Guaranteed to work. What's on the bottom? Yeah, but alas, <laughs> it, it's like they're protecting themselves from a backfire, maybe protecting themselves from people that they um, solicited or uh, what do you call it? Um, entangled, but that's not the word I really want to use. It's another word. Whoever they brought into this craftiness, <laughs> this practice of sorts, it's become, they've become more um, enemies or threats than they have been support system. Where there was an alliance before, now there's contempt is what I'm feeling. And that's why somebody's in this nine of wands because it's only, but they maybe because they're tired of protecting themselves or because they feel like they're always having to be on guard. This could even be paranoia with the nine of wands, somebody that's always having to watch their back because they know people are not pleased with them or energy is, is obstinate to their favor at this time, whether it be people or acts, you know, like the backfire of what the, whatever they've been engaging in. And as, and you know, I'm speaking of it mystically because this magician card just evokes that for me, certainly, but it literally could be just what somebody was into, like the, how they engaged their time and energy, like I said, blood, sweat, and tears, what they were willing to do for the motivation of this big windfall of abundance. Different schemes and plots and associations, collaborations, maybe some ch shady energies they connected with. Could, yeah, it could be, you know, to get the job done or get some, to, to do something, to acquire something. Seems like somebody bit off more than they could chew, though. Because his head's all bandaged up. He, he's still alive, but he's barely standing or at least needing support with the very stick that he was using to protect himself which also could have been the very stick that, yes, that he was using in his craft. So it's like somebody's magic or impulses have 
backfired on them. I have It's like your magic wand turning on you. <laughs> And, and and doing a spell, doing a number on you. But it's more so energetically, like whatever he was doing, he's now reaping, practically speaking. Okay, let me see what he's running towards and then we'll come down here. towards some type of or is oh is yeah because this is what he's still um feeling entitled to oh so somebody's still trying to reclaim this happiness or to ruin it <laughs> for somebody else those are the only two options which could be the case they were materially focused on manifesting like wealth, prosperity, property, maybe. I don't know why I'm saying that, but um, physical matter of wealth. And now it's like they're going back either to retrieve or attack a Ten of Cups. This could be a family, it could be a soul group, it could be just, it's like a picture perfect type of life. So either they're feeling entitled to reclaim that, what they may have forfeited on account of chasing a dollar and a dime, or in their rage, wanting to wage war against like almost bring misery to someone else's rain on somebody else's parade like because they're feeling like that's that's their uh response to kind of like gain some like to self-soothe themselves on someone else's misery that's what i'm getting they're miserable, so they want to come rain on somebody else. Like, if I, if I ain't happy, nobody's happy type of energy. And that's whack. <laughs> exactly. The Hierophant. Yeah, this could be the unorthodox community, the society or whatever. Like, somebody poached themselves to be the head of or the leader of. And it's like, in this case, like this, the preacher being kicked out of his own, being, being uh, ostracized by his congregation. And it's like, well, now I have no sheep. I have no parishioners. Or the head of an establishment, a corporation or something being kicked out of position by the board of directors or investors, whatever you call it. Well, now I have no powerful position, no platform. You know, it's like somebody's losing or has lost their influence. And they're not happy about it. happy about it. Try as I might to get these cards straight. When I look at it back, I'm always like, damn it. <laughs> I would have just moved that one up just a little bit. <laughs> I'll be tripping about these cards sometimes. Um, 
yeah so yeah somebody somebody is disappointed mm, disappointed seems too mild it's, it feels like devastation that's what it feels like Especially with this justice card here. That's why I keep saying like somebody feels entitled to something. It's like somebody tried to take reclaim something by force as if it it was assigned to them or belonged to them. Is that but legally I feel like it's weird because I'm, I'm hesitating because it's the ten of cups not the ten of pentacles so someone that's so materially focused I would assume would expect to retrieve something or some payout or something from a ten of pentacles maybe even legally you know to feel like they they lay some claim to an inheritance um an account if this is a matter of like i said somebody being fired or or released from their position then they may feel entitled to a severance or some stock options or something money but what were they thinking to get from a Ten of Pentacles, literally other than disrupting somebody's peace and happiness? The court, unless this is spiritual court, there's really not much resolve to be made in that affair. Let me see. Hmm. And then we got the Page of Cups. A message, maybe an apology. Could just be representing the karma. So it could be the rush in to offer an apology or an apology that's issued, but it's not well received. It's like, okay, yeah, we got you. You know, it doesn't seem like it's all that sincere either with the Page of Pentacles. In this regard, it's probably somebody just issuing a statement or making an offering of uh, apology or remorse because if they feel like that's what they need to do or they feel like that might be the only thing that could <clears throat> help them to manipulate the situation but it's not as, or even gain sympathy, you know, or some type of pity from whomever they're in prosecution, whoever is prosecuting them, whether it be legally or spiritually or energetically, whatever, maybe even professionally at this point. But I don't get the sense that it was well received Hold on, because what's throwing me off is this ten, this ten of Cups and the Justice. It's justified that the Ten of Cups would stay intact. I feel like something, maybe there's some legal protection or some justified protection on that energy, whether it be a family, a legacy, um could be a family business, maybe, could be, hmm, the family name, ah, so somebody was attacking a family, an established family unit with slander. That's the Knight of Swords. It was lies. Yeah, and so that's why the apology is kind of like, there we go. 
Thank you, spirit. Thank you. That's why that's the liar and the stealer and the killer and the destroyer right there. But emphasis on the liar and the destroying because somebody was trying to destroy someone's reputation or fan, like I said, family name, like their legacy, which would have could have maybe put a tarnish on the prosperity of that legacy materially. So if people start, it's like somebody lying about a family, like, oh, they're, they're really this or they're really that, you know, putting, creating a whole narrative around a bloodline or just, you know, to blemish this happy life. Well, you think they're all this and that, but really the dad does this and the mom does that. And the kids are, you know, like somebody really trying to tear down a family's um, character individually and collectively. Hell, that is definitely slander and defam defamation. That's what it is. Some defamation is definitely a... Um, a prosecute uh, what it was was a legal offense, I guess I should say. Mm -hmm, for sure. So somebody would have wanted to apologize for how they behaved for the lies that they told, but like I said, or they will want to. At this point, they may feel like they need to, or and either they feel like it won't be well received. Or they just know that it won't be because of the gross nature of their lies. Like going back to that seven of pentacles, it's somebody that really dug their heels and maybe for a very long time, an extensive amount of time, and the magnitude of the narratives that they were spreading were vicious and very harmful to some folks. It seems like they didn't do much to tarnish it holistically because it's still intact here with the Ten of Cups. And then there's justice, which means that whatever was lost or incurred on account of this attack will be recouped. But still, how is going to be recouped is the question. Is it through a matter of a lawsuit and charges pressed or has just somebody's actions finally caught up with them. It's, it's the funny thing about karma, as I say often, you know, it doesn't always pay you back in the same, you know, you don't always get it back the same way that you dished it. Sometimes people will get away with their infractions and then when you least expect it or from the place or person that you least expect it to come from, bam, there it is. So somebody could be caught up because both of these can be imprisonment type cards for me, especially the nine of wands where somebody is bound by their actions. Like they just did one thing too much and now they're all tied up and entangled. But sometimes I see the nine of both of these nine, nine. Sometimes I see <clears throat> the nine of swords as like somebody in the jail cell. This is their little cot, you know, and also being haunted by their actions. Like now having to kind of sit with nothing but time to think about what you've done. And now here we are with the justice card. So that does make sense. That makes sense. That maybe someone is finally being called to judgment for what they've created. And they would want to apologize, maybe to make a phone call, a collect call <laughs> from, from the prison. But it's like... You don't even have a number or you don't even, you know, like you can't even get through. And also for what purpose of relief? Is it really for your own conscious relief? Or is it really what you feel is due to whomever you harmed? You know?
I don't know why I felt needed necessary to say that, pose that question, but it must matter for somebody. Like, what are you really apologizing for, especially with that page of, of cups? So just save it. You, you're going to need the energy, so it seems. Because at the Ten of Cups, what's the Page of Cups? What, what value does it really have? Yeah, what I say, you're going to need the energy, Ten of Wands. Was that the moon card? Mm hmm Queen of Pentacles. Some restoration has occurred or is occurring or will occur. <laughs> you know, the matriarch is being restored, revived back to her highly vibrational and fertile self. Mm -hmm. What they say, happy, happy wife, happy life. That's on the bottom. Still, still with this fishy cup. I said fishy. Somebody, somebody was real reckless with their mouth and with their words. This is a high value woman right here with this queen of pentacles. Somebody that's well kept, is a, a nurturer that knows how to keep a house, that looks good, smells good, is efficient in her um, you know, her finances that may even be a businesswoman and a homemaker or just knows how to take care of her home like a business or whatever the case may be. It's somebody that's stable and secure. And here goes somebody that I just got this energy of so, just trying to completely depreciate the value of this energy. Could have talked about, some, like I said, somebody as a mom talked about their hygiene, talked about their stability or how poor or broke they were. I'm just getting all the contrary things that could have come out of this this um, fishy energy over here. Like so maybe even talked about somebody, somebody intimately having evidence or no, because it, it gives that they didn't need it wasn't necessarily true things. It was just the worst that somebody could think to say to really just defame someone's character, their reputation, their competency in many ways, shapes, and forms, maybe even tarnish. That's what somebody was trying to do, tarnish their, um, impede upon their possibilities for this happy future. It's like somebody foresaw the possibility of somebody moving on and having a good life or just having a good life without them in some way, shape, or form. And they decided to just stomp all over that potential. Mm, mm, mm. What, it, apologize? <laughs> like, is there an apology sincere enough for that type of activity, audacity. It, is there, I don't, do they make a Hallmark card for that? <laughs> like, I don't even think you could form your lips to say, I'm sorry that I tried to ruin your life. Is there a Hallmark card for that? I need to know. Because if there isn't, then I would, somebody just needs to save their breath for real. <laughs> mm -mm. Funny.
Oh, it's up right. Let's see. It did a little somersault. There's that again. Yeah, this was a society of foolishness, a congregation of chaos, corruption, corrupt congregation. Ooh, my arm is hurting out of nowhere. Either a corrupt congregation or a corrupt organization. Could be both. Because hell, these days, churches and spiritual and religious organizations are kind of a corporation <laughs> in their own right. Some of them, anyway. I don't know what this is. What's on the bottom? Five of Swords. Yeah, there's the corruption right there. And there's the lies also. Manipulation. Some type of je jealousy for sure with the Five of Swords. So somebody was jealous of somebody's influence. A highly revered leader was jealous of someone's influence as the Queen of Pentacles like their natural ability to nurture and, you know, what I'm feeling is like forge a comfort or uh, an exchange of trust because that's, that's currency for somebody in a position such as this, right? The Hierophant, particularly if we're talking about like a corrupt spiritual leader, that has to work very hard, back to that seven of pentacles, to gain trust, to gain a dollar, to like, they gotta put a lot, they gotta put their back into it to hold up this facade. And then somebody naturally is just like, just like jumps on YouTube, starts a channel, speaking their truth or speaking from the heart or sharing their spiritual perspective and donations just pour in. Like that's, <laughs> That meanwhile, the the pastor got to go to church, um, got to prepare a message every Sunday, and they ain't even really all that connected to it because secretly they're kind of in contempt for the cloth. You know, it's just somebody that feels like this is what they must resort to for whatever reason, or this is their chosen mode of manipulation, or manifestation but they're not it doesn't feel like there's an affinity for what they do it really feels like an obligation at this point point. and here's somebody literally just enjoying themselves being themselves and doing better for it there's some jealousy about that so it could be some contempt with religious structure, with religious organizations, which makes sense. There's always been contempt there where people get, you know, slandered as witches and warlocks and demons and all types of stuff because they're not in compliance with convention. You know, there's that. But seeing the the disparity in the two experiences now or expressions maybe is kind of you know it's it's kind of evidential that people are becoming less connected to religious organization as they are to spiritual um, community or com I don't know how you how you would how I would call that like spiritual I don't know devotion restructuring I don't know and you can demonize it all you like you can 
but it's not going to change the reality for either side. So it could really be as practical and even as so as sort of primitive as these um, these religious leaders waging war against spiritual leaders in their own right, motivated by jealousy and disdain because they feel like, you know, they should have the monopoly on the trans the the transition to heaven, <laughs> you know, like or whatever, you know, being the, the tour guide to heaven, so to speak. They put in the work. Yeah, seven of pentacles. They put in the work. They got certified, went to school or, you know, went through the trenches of what it looks like to become a leader in an organized way, in an orthodox way. And here are these like newbies come just setting up shop virtually and poaching all their their parishioners, you know, but it's like it's not a matter of being mad. It's a it's it's a matter of shifting your um you know, really shifting your craft. If the, me if the message is the message, it should stand on its own no matter what, but maybe you need to go online too, or you need to become more virtually intensive or more communally connected, you know? Get in, get out there, get your hands dirty a little bit, be a little bit vulnerable and, ex and exposed in ways and in pl on platforms that you wouldn't have before. That's where a lot of the fall of organized religion is coming in. It's like people want something real and raw, not just regenerated from eons. It needs to be relatable to their present day struggle and what they what they are coming into the knowledge of on their own cognition which stretches religious leaders to now expand their own. And if, if, if it's going to be the same as what has been regurgitated over the years, then there lies the conflict. If you're not willing to expand your mind to consider where there might be opportunity for advancement or a fresh perspective or even being open to consideration of other expressions of love, i.e. God, that you may have been conditioned to reject and resist. That's a harder transition for some though. That calls for almost total transformation of which everybody's not willing to submit to. So there lies the... <laughs> you know, the pitfall. Because if you're not willing to, then you find yourself in some strange positions actually calling in judgment and justice upon your own head because you're doing the very thing that almost all religions teach you not to do, and that is to condemn. So now you put yourself in a position to be out of alignment with your own truth. And that definitely doesn't yield anything prosperous in the long run or in, or the short term. Certainly not immediately so. It just works to really dredge up more disdain and irritation and aggravation and Eventually, you just got to look at yourself and figure out where you can, where you get to evolve. Forget about everything else. Hell, maybe for some preachers, it's like you might be resisting your own liberation. <laughs> you know, like, do you even want to do this anymore? Like, honestly speaking, you might be 
be pushing back against God, God's self opening the doors for you to be free, to actually now move in the way of your destiny and the way that you can truly make an impact on a greater audience or a greater congregation, i.e. the world, you know, because you're doing what you truly love to do and just not what you feel called or conditioned to do. You know, but I don't know. This is this seems kind of prescriptive because everybody doesn't even have the come from to know that energy. I know it well because I grew up in the church. So I know how it is with pastors that just almost feel like a slave to the pulpit or a slave to their ministry, but you don't even really sense the passion in it anymore. It's just like people get stuck in a rut and feel like they have to do things the way that they've been doing. Otherwise, they feel condemned by their peers or by their um, denomination or the church itself or um, by their family that has a certain expectation on them or by even themselves. You know, when you feel like you were so-called called to be a man of the cloth or a woman of the cloth, and something shifts for you somewhere down the line, it's hard to really to really uh, accept that, re that truth. And then beyond accepting it, know how to react or respond. It's not easy. But the more you resist is the more you actually end up going backwards into pitfalls that, like I said, will ultimately have you acting against your integrity anyway. So it's like, what's the lesser of the evils to be doing something that you're not passionate about, that doesn't you're not thriving in to some degree, or to take the, the chance against uh, scrutiny or judgment by man to actually be free to explore what the divine is calling you to. It doesn't feel that that sweet here though of a transition. It feels like some that what I'm saying feels like what somebody may have wished they had considered instead of the route that they took because that hasn't yielded them the best results in any regard. Like they didn't get what they wanted out of it. They didn't stop the progression of, you know, what they were obstinate against or opposing. Somebody's, the, 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 community has advanced that much more and they're finding that it's not as spiritually unlawful that's why i was like what is this here like what does somebody expect to get if they're after money what why attack the spirit i don't know but it turns out that they're realizing it wasn't actually or they're they're going to realize that it actually wasn't and it wasn't unlawful it wasn't wasn't spiritually out of line or unjustified for this to occur, that it's very much within the ordinance of God, the universe, source itself. It all is to some degree. Even the religion has its place when it's when it's um facilitated in pure faith, not, you know, distortedly so. I'll just get a couple more. Yeah, this is somebody's new beginning. Like I said, it's like, it could have even have been a tower moment of sorts, even though I don't have any real physical evidence for that. But 
it's all about perspective. You know, it could even it could have even be somebody, like I said before, being exposed or being kicked out of their position in some way, shape, or form because of a sequence of events or occurrences. And they can choose to see that as like a, a pitfall, or they could choose to actually see it as freedom, you know, a fresh start, a new opportunity to explore themselves in a way that they never have before, to actually realign themselves with their pure passion, maybe pick up some, some ambitions that they left behind as a child or dismissed, you know, in their, in their more ambitious years because they felt beholden to some other pathway. So yeah, somebody could see it as that. It could be, yeah, ooh, yikes. <laughs> and the four of swords, damn, what the hell? I saw it under here, I had to see. The three and the four of swords. Yeah, it's, it's, it's given that some someone may have a hard time seeing this as the positive, like as good news because their perspective is jaded. So, and it it comes down to how you see it. So what it is and what somebody perceives it to be and how they, you know, carry that out is very different. That's what's going to make the difference. Like even from here at the Nine of Swords, somebody's anxious about something that hasn't even happened yet on account of what they anticipate. Maybe worried about what people are going to say or how people are going to um, reject them or respond or label them or judge them or whatever, you know, but it's with the justice card, it's all fair because especially if it's anything close to what I've been saying, whether it's a religious leader or a CEO, it's like do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Now that's the rule, the doctrine that is universal, no matter religion, race, creed, age, <laughs> timeline, dimension, realm of reality, it all matters to treat people the way you want to be treated and somebody let the worst of them get the best of them. It seems to me before they straightened up, if they have straightened up, but definitely against, you know, a more viable option. And now they may have to bear the brunt of that in some way, shape, or form. However, it doesn't necessarily have to be the end of life as, as someone knows it with the Three of Swords here and the Four of Swords. But somebody is definitely a bit devastated by this outcome. I ain't getting into the health stuff today after yesterday's reading, but I, I definitely see, I see heartbreak, but I also see heart attack here. And then with the four of swords, like somebody needs to just relax and let this thing play out, whatever this thing is, play out however it's going to and try with all, use all that energy that they are well known to devote and to at least seeing a glimmer of hope for themselves for some fresh start, because otherwise it seems like they're really going to, they're going to exhaust themselves to the point of ailment or illness. And then you'll be good to nobody, even to yourself. Yeah, here's a sun card. There's a possibility of promise. It may come the bitter the bitter sweet thing is that it may come on account of exposure though. And that's what I feel somebody is afraid of. 
they're all they're thinking about is the exposure of their truth of who they are or of whatever this circumstance is oh man i see something else too because i see kids i see the hierophant sometimes that's a real tricky icky combination and then talking about exposure, like somebody may definitely have all rights to be regretful and even remorseful to some degree or to a great degree. I don't know what we're talking about here for sure, but oh geez, there's the five of cups. Somebody might. But you face the light, you face the music, you know, you weather the consequences, however they are, they are um, dispersed, you take accountability and responsibility. You, ultimately, you take your licks and you keep on ticking or don't. This can be um, the easy way out as well, too, on account of being too emotionally distressed and not seeing any hope for the future. But the evidence here says that, that there is a silver lining of a new beginning, even for the worst offenses. So consider what I just inferenced here, that it don't really get too much worse than that, than, you know, actually unalive in somebody. Um, so if there is grace for redemption in that regard, for a pure heart, a sincere, um, for sincere remorse, then it just is what it is at this point. Definitely don't make it worse on yourself or on the situation by falling yet again into the conflict of your best judgment. The contrast, I should say, of your best judgment. of sorts yeah somebody somebody feels sorry because they can't they don't feel like they can get an apology like remember I was saying like somebody would want to call or want to extend an apology but they can't somebody's some it feels like somebody is way too dependent on absolution from man's point of view at this point literally about how people see them or if somebody will forgive them or and I don't even feel like I don't know like some something about it still feels strange and and distorted like is it like I said is it really about forgiveness for really offering us an apology for someone else's healing or is I think somebody just wants to feel better about who they've been and what they've done and the outcome if they can't do anything else they will want to at least be able to glean some forgiveness or absolution in a human exchange to f maybe feel better in a spiritual sense, you know, like, but it's kind of like a backwards, um, I don't know, like ambition or motivation. Cause it, you could say, I'm sorry all day long to whomever you may have hurt. What it comes down to is the healing that you're willing to have for yourself and that's between you and spirit that don't have nothing to do with nobody else really 
And if no, if somebody never accepts your apology, it's still necessary to find some healing for yourself or some settlement or acceptance for who you wish to become if you truly do wish that for you? Or is it really just still about looking the part? Like I said, the empty apology from the pulpit when, are you really sorry? You know what I mean? Like you for what you so-called did to be exposed to the whole congregation, or is it just the thing to say? Is it just expected, you know, for you to be apologetic on account of being caught? You know, that's the difference between regret and remorse to me. Two different energies. But one thing's for sure is that somebody, yet again, is displacing their investment, their energetic investments into things that are not prosperous or productive to people that may not, may or may not be receptive to it. You know, she's got her arms crossed, like to a sword, like, mm -mm, I don't even want to hear it, <laughs> you know, or like, okay, I got gotcha, you, but... uh you know, don't call here again type of energy. Maybe hang up on you before they even accept the call, let alone to collect one like police, you know? So the best thing somebody can do is go chase that silver lining and really hope that it penetrates their soul this time around so that they can be refreshed and revived if that is still possible. restored, you know, healed from the child perspective of, of where they may have been bruised or um, abused in some way to become this energy at this point. That's going to take, that takes everybody, all the energy that you have, which is why a lot of people on that path usually go into solitude, spiritual solitude, as I like to say, because it's like a all senses on deck to really get to the root of who you are and why you are and what you truly or who you truly want to be. So good luck and Godspeed to anyone on that journey in this regard or otherwise, because it's not easy, certainly not easy, but it's not, it's, it's less easy when you resist that invitation, because then you find yourself on roads that don't lead anywhere good, usually. They usually are paths to destruction and self-destruction more than it is for anyone else, even if there are some casualties along the way. It all kind of doubles back to be your problem, your burden to bear. So to avoid all of that, go toward the light. <laughs> all right, anyway, thanks for listening and watching. Until next time, as always, I leave you with peace.